Hello, this is a tutorial on using an app called Padlet. Padlet is a digital bulletin board or wall. It's free. It comes for uh, both web-based application, so you can use it on a PC or a Mac, laptop or desktop. You can also use it on mobile devices. It works with the iOS. There's a separate app and there's a separate app for Android devices. Again, it's free. There is a premium version, but there's a lot of very interesting features that you can do with the free version, so you don't have to do the paid version. Also, you do not have to sign up for an account. However, if you prefer to create Padlets or digital bulletin boards for digital storytelling or all kinds of other uses that I'll explain in a moment, it is a good idea to sign up for an account. You can sign up using Facebook or Google Plus or just create um, your account with an email address and password. That will allow you to then save things on the site for sharing later or for pulling them up to present. So again, can be used from a faculty perspective as well as very easy learning curve. You can have students use this tool to create a whole bunch of different things. So before we get to that, how do you get to Padlet? Well, www.padlet.com will take you to the website. It'll take you to the home area. And then you'll have a, a link to create your account or to start building a, a Padlet. But again, you want to create an account if you'd like to be able to share it with others and access it after this one time that you're on, uh, on your computer. So once you've logged in, you'll see your name up here to the side and then you can go to town and creating uh, Padlets, which I'll show you in a moment. So first of all, Padlet is possibly the easiest way to create and collaborate. You can use it to uh, do presentations. It can be a tool to be used for reflection. You can do comparison and contrast, digital storytelling, topic summaries, notes. You can collect feedback, in kind of a poll situation. You can use it for entrance and exit tickets. You can bookmark your favorite links. You can use it for KWL charts or what do I already know? What would I want to know? And what have I learned? KWL. Again, collaborative format can be in groups. Um, for it really is many different people because a lot of different folks depending on how you set it up you can have multiple participants you can have one of these padlets be for a group and that entire group works together on that padlet or you can have multiple groups work on the same padlet so it's a great tool for collaboration you can also do some brainstorming and another idea is to do to do some back channeling, to use it as a back channel for discussions that you're going to have. Once you create Padlets, they'll be listed here like I have this test one here, and if I needed to get access to it, I would just click on it. But we're actually going to build a Padlet for you and show you how easy it is to do that. Before we get to building them, I want to show you a couple of sample Padlets that are out here, just so you get an idea of what it's capable of doing. This one here is from the book The Odyssey, and it's an Odyssey timeline, and so you can see we have uh, texts, we have images here. You could also have videos, you could have web links, all kinds of different things. And whenever your cursor turns to a finger, you can actually click on, and in this case, anything that we clicked on, we're going to get a zoomed in uh, image. And you also get access to who posted, date and time, and so forth. I can now advance through all of the images that are in this particular presentation and I can actually go back to the entire presentation here. Then there's, uh, here's another example here. Here's they've used it for a compare and contrast assignment. They're talking about Windows versus Mac, which one is better, and you can see we have the participants and then their comments here. Okay, so let's get back to our dashboard and let's create one. So in order to create a new Padlet, I can go right here to New Padlet and Build My Wall. And so it comes up with this blank, kind of a grayish paper looking thing. And let's take a look at the toolbar. Over here to the right is the toolbar. This is the Padlet symbol. 
and uh, this will also take you to your home page. If I wanted to create a new Padlet, that's the plus sign. This is my profile. I can go in and add more stuff about me as the author or creator of the Padlet. When you get to the end, this will show you the options of sharing and exporting. I can share it in a number of different ways. I can export it as an image, a PDF. I can actually send it in an email. I can print it. I can grab the embed code and insert it into a website. And there's also a shortcut plugin if anybody is using WordPress for a blog. And then you have a QR code for this particular Padlet. So a lot of different ways to do that. Uh, going back here, we have the information, get more information about Padlet, get help. And then this is kind of like your edit button. It's called modify this Padlet. And so if I click here, this allows me to actually kind of get started creating my Padlet. So the basic information, this is the tab I'm on. You can see as I work my way down, there's different things that I have access to in my Padlet or in my wall. So I'm going to create a Padlet title. And I could give it a description if I want. I don't have to. And then I can create a portrait or an image that goes along with this title here if I want to. This is the Padlet symbol. I can choose a photograph or take a photograph of something. I'm just going to choose the Padlet symbol right now. And so now I have a title. Again, you don't have to do a title if it's something that's just going to be used for this particular purpose in class. However, if the goal is to have this thing saved and you may want to get access to it later, you may want to share it. We'll talk about privacy settings in a moment and who can get access to this that you will let get access to it. And so it is helpful if it has a title because that way you can, if you got a bunch of Padlets there, you can kind of search and make sure you find and grab the right one. So let's talk about uh, laying out the rest of our Padlet. The next thing you're going to want to do, I think probably easiest thing is just to go in order here, and that's to go down to the wallpaper. We're currently on this kind of grayish paper looking one, but as you can see, there's all kinds of different backgrounds that I can have or wallpapers. If I was going to do something where this little map image would be valuable, uh, I could consider something like that. I'm actually going to go down a little bit further and I'm going to use this wood one here just because it's kind of plain, but it's a little bit different than gray. So now I have my wallpaper. I can change this at any particular point. So we need to consider layouts. There's three different types of layouts and this will determine how the individual posts on the wall will appear. Freeform is the default, and freeform simply means that I can double click, or any of the members who have access to this Padlet wall can double click anywhere in the space, and they will be allowed to put a sticky note, if you will, or to put a post on this particular wall. Stream means that the first time a post is listed, it will be at the top, and then the next one will be underneath, and the next one will be underneath, and so forth. So it's a stream. The grid is where it breaks up your wall into sections. You will have little squares and the first post will fill a square, then you'll fill another square and, and you'll basically go around in grid format filling it up that way. I generally like free form, but I did want to point out what the other formats were for your layout. So the privacy, this is where you get to determine how you will share it and who gets access and exactly what they get access to on your wall. The default is to a hidden link, which means you have to share this link with somebody. It is not a public link. You have to share it with somebody in order for them to have access, and that's whether or not you want to give them access to see it or whether you want to get access to actually have them add something to the wall. So if you're going to have your students use this to create an assignment, they're going to have to make sure they share this link with you in order to get you to be able to see it. Private means that only you can see it and anybody specifically that you add to the approved list by putting their email address in there. You can also password protect it. Hidden link again, as I said, only people have access to the link. It's not public and then there's totally public. The hidden link usually works for me, so I just leave it there. Then you have to choose what type of access. The default is that the person who gets this link can actually write or add a post to your wall. They can also have view only or read only where all they can do is look at it, they can add, they can edit. Write means that they can 
put a new post on and edit their own posts, but they can't edit any posts or change the pass the Padlet wall beyond that uh, their own posts. Can moderate is the highest level of uh, accessibility. Is they get the ability to do both view and write, and they can also edit any posts, so their own or those posts by others. And you have the ability with more privacy controls to actually have it set so that a moderator must approve the post before they're actually allowed to be viewed by the other people who don't have this top level control of moderate. So I'm going to leave it with the hidden link and I'm going to leave it with that they can write their own posts. So if I want to, um, again, I'm going to get a link when I'm all done. That's this address here. I'm going to get a link where I can share it. But I can also add people by username if we're, if we're looking at a sign-in. Uh, because, uh, again, I said you can sign in with Facebook or with uh, Google+. So you can pop a username in here or you can pop in an email address and add some additional people. Here's that more privacy controls that we were talking about. If I click this box, then uh, the posts that come in from everybody else will have to be moderated or approved before everybody else can see them. So whenever I get my specific thing set up here, I can just uh, submit this thing. Actually, I'm not going to do anything so I can get out of here. And I don't need any of that. Don't any, uh, Let's talk about the, um, the address here. This uh, an address is currently created for me by Padlet. So this is the address for this particular Padlet. If I wanted to copy and paste this particular URL, we'd be good to go. Or I can click here and I can add to my uh, user ID here, which is bpain01 at padlet.com. And I can add something like management 101 week three or something like that if it's a little bit more descriptive. I have the ability to copy. And then obviously I can delete if this turns out to be something I no longer need or if I've made a mistake and would rather start over, I can actually delete this. So I'm just going to click to get rid of the toolbar, but it's still right here in case I need to get it back. So here's how easy this is to do. So I'm going to, we're talking about functional areas of business, so I'm actually going to start. And Bob is going to say accounting and finance is a functional area of business. And then Mary is going to add marketing. And Tom is going to add human resources. Now let's say that Tom decides he would like to add some extra things. You can see down here we have the ability to add a link. So we can add a URL that would be for an image for a website, for a map, for a video, what have you. We can also upload a file and we can use our webcam to take a photo if we wanted to like include ourselves with our particular post. Okay. Once I create this thing, notice if I hover over it, I have the ability to hit the pencil, which means I can go back in and edit this. Remember, I have editing ability for all of my own posts unless I'm considered the moderator and then it's my post and everybody else's. And if I want to delete something, I can go here. So let's go back into this post just so I can show you one additional thing. So let's say I wanted to add one of these things. For right now, I'm going to add a URL. I think it's .org. We'll find out in a second. So uh, if I've done it correctly, uh, I've added um, this web page for the Society of Humor, Human Resource Managers as maybe this is something I want to, you know, pull up. So there's our, you know, I click on it and there's our Society of Human uh, for Human Resource Management. And um, this way, um, obviously, interactive as well as just having some text and some static images and so forth, I can actually pull some stuff up. So I'm going to go back to, uh, I think she's still trying to load get rid of this. Go back to my site here. So again, I can add any of those types of things. If I want to edit Bob's, you know, maybe I go to um, AICPA.org is just an example of something that I can pull in. And there's our 
um, accounting website. So it can add a little bit more visual appeal and so forth. So uh, at this particular point, this is an example of some things that you can do with it. I showed you some samples. There's all kinds of different um, instructional strategies that this could be helpful for. You can use it as a faculty, but I think it could be very, very powerful for students to do some creation and collaboration exercises. Thank you.